They all leaked. They had to release those radioactive particles, gases, liquids and, into the atmosphere. So no matter where it exploded, it still went to the atmosphere. And they waited until Chernobyl came over to release their bomb tests in Nevada, and they wanted everybody to think the radiation was coming from Chernobyl, not from Nevada, the Nevada test site. So, um, these nanoparticles of uranium, nanoparticles are um, non-specific catalysts or enzymes in the body, in living systems, and the catalysts and enzymes are messenger molecules. They go into the cells and they tell each cell process, there's, there are processes in the cell that have to happen in a specific order. And so these molecules, these enzymes and catalysts tell what parts of the cell when to work. And the catalyst or enzyme is specific to each specific step. It's a special catalyst or enzyme for that step only. Right, now my experience has been that in the cat catalysis, Mm -hmm. that the body will use something similar if yes. it doesn't have what it needs. But and this is the big problem because now yes. we have non-specific yes. and nutritionally deficient people. Right, right. Yeah, that's right, right, that's right. That's right. So, um, so these, there are lots of other problems with uranium. It's a, um, it's very, very chemically attracted to phosphate structures. The DNA and the mitochondria, which produce all the energy for the body, are loaded with phosphate. In nature, or in our lives, they mine phosphate to mine, to extract uranium from it. In nature, all through the universe, uranium and phosphate just love each other. And so what they've done is made fertilizer out of the phosphate, the uranium tailings, which is the phosphate, but 85 or 90 percent of the uranium is in the tailings. So then they put them in planes and they sprayed it all over tobacco fields, agriculture, and they started a cancer epidemic in smoking that way. Well, it's depopulation and genocide. William Cooper said that. He was in <coughs> the tobacco. Yes, but, yeah. All the tobacco is loaded with uranium and the uranium decay products. Why can you can? Um, How can you do such a thing? So that was the cancer, the cause of the cancer. Yes, <coughs> that's the lung cancer. So um, these uranium particles, nanoparticles, that are all over in our bodies now from all these uranium wars in the Middle East and Central Asia. Um, we're all loaded with it. Just analyze your hair. Um, these particles are also transmitters and receivers. The radio antennas. And so I did a, a radio interview with a CIA scientist who had, um, he had done research and, and reviewed uh, um, grant applications and patents and stuff like that for the U.S. government, for NATO, for the WHO, for DOD, for the UN. I mean, he'd been everywhere. And so um, we're about halfway through the interview. It was about depleted uranium and nanoparticle toxicity. And I said, well, um, Dr. Parker, um, there, there have been all of these press releases this week, and I just really wonder, I want to tell you about them. A UC Berkeley lab discovered that carbon nanoparticles can be used to receive and transmit uh, songs. <coughs> and they have a little video clip on their laboratory website and you play it and there's this little nanoparticle sitting there and they transmit a song to it and then it plays the song back that you can hear. And I said, what is the application of this discovery? Because you see, the University of California put a huge press release out 
the National Academy of Sciences put a huge press release out. The um, NSF put a huge press release out. I mean, I can't believe how many press releases came out. Why? And he, caught, he sort of caught his breath and he said, well, um, he said they're planning to use these nanoparticles attached to the DNA to alter the human chromosome. Mm -hmm. <coughs> when was 